this is Will again from Music Protest, and we are looking today at another sound pack in Ableton. And today I'm going to look at Upright Piano. So this is uh, a really, really great library. Obviously, it's a piano. It's a sampled piano. It's using Ableton's built-in sampler device. It also makes good use of Ableton 11's new uh, polyphonic expression, MIDI polyphonic expression protocol, MPE which is kind of a new fad with uh, MIDI devices to give performers more expressive capability when they are performing or when they're recording, composing. There's a lot of that built into this. Uh, but maybe the most notable thing about it here is that it's made by Spitfire Audio. And Spitfire Audio has a, has a fantastic reputation for making these amazing instruments. Now, the other day, I looked at their string quartet which is also a library that comes new with Ableton 11. And it, it sounded great. Um, it appears they've, they've built, Spitfire Audio has built some of their own Macs for live devices to integrate into these device chains and instruments so that uh, you know there's, there's more richness, more dynamics, more control so that the instrument is elevated to the Spitfire standards because Spitfire has a fantastic reputation. So what we're going to do today is take a look at uh, some of the fundamentals of how this um, upright piano works and give you a chance to hear it. And uh, if you have any questions, of course, uh, you can pop something into the chat and I'll check that out towards the end. So let's uh, just switch over to my computer here. And what I'm going to do, since this is a, a kind of more of a more of a keyboard instrument than a push instrument, I'm going to be using an overhead on my complete control keyboard. But if we go over here to packs, uh, we'll find this instrument or this pack down here, Upright Piano for Sp by Spitfire Audio. And this Spitfire Audio is just a, a very well-known company. Now, they also are making this, uh, where was it, the string quartet here. And then I think there was also a, a brass, there's a brass, um, see here, here it is, brass quartet by Spitfire. So these three libraries, brass quartet, string quartet, and upright piano, are all new with Ableton 11. They use the new hybrid reverb in Ableton 11, the new uh, polyphonic expression MIDI protocol, and they are they are sampled fresh, from what I understand. These are fresh samples from Spitfire, so not like rehashed from their other libraries. These are unique, and they have been set up within the sampler within Ableton, so they're not contact instruments or anything like that. So let's go through here and just take a quick look at you know what we've got here. There are these uh, Max for Live device utilities. From what I understand right now, these are not so much to be used independently, but you know I could be wrong. I'm still learning about these, but I think these are actually just custom made by Spitfire to give their instruments more nuance and expression, and they're used within the instrument racks themselves. Samples, we've got uh, you know the actual audio samples, uh, some MIDI collections, which are, which are really nice sounding. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down a little bit. So really nice sounding MIDI clips that you could just kind of load in for inspiration, right? Just to get started quickly. But the main thing here, oops, is this instrument. So upright piano. So I'm going to load that in here to a MIDI track and take a look at what it looks like down here. So this is the this is the instrument right here. So there's eight uh, macros that are preset, and um, I'm going to actually switch over to my overhead here, and so you can see uh, here here how this sounds it's a very nice sound I've actually got uh, my macros set up here so that I can make adjustments so um, if we look back at the screen you can see that I'm able to change the the pedal noise I just have these pre-programmed onto my um, my complete control. You could do this with any MIDI controller with rotary encoders. 
and the the pedal noise is is obviously making it so you can hear pedal noise hammers the same thing so you can get this sort of nuance of of actual recordings of piano and just to listen to that if i were to uh, expand out our device chain here we would find these different uh, device chains within the instrument and one of them let's just look at this hammers for example and you can see that when I play the keyboard so I'm playing overhead now you probably can't hear that so let me actually go into the software and just add like uh, you know something to kick up that volume so I'm going to go to um, audio effects and I'm going to go to utilities and then I'm just going to add a utility on the bottom here and that'll allow me to gain this up so let me see so you should be able now to hear as I play you should just be hearing the hammer sound Right, but if I were to go ahead and turn down that hammer, that hammer macro, then you're not going to hear the key or the the hammers anymore. So you can really get this this really nuanced uh, sound like you're recording a real piano. And these little these little things can really add a lot to um, any production that you do even if it you know even if it's uh adding something to like you know a, a rock track or something where the piano is kind of in the background doesn't really have to be authentic totally authentic but this will still this will still work for that because you can either take out the hammer noise or leave it in if you want a little more authenticity if you're doing something though like sort of uh, maybe more trailer-ish, uh, you're, you're doing some kind of composition, you're trying to make something moody, those hammer and pedal sounds can really, really make a big difference in elevating the, the effect of, uh, of your, your production. So really nice sound. I'm just going to go and uh, unsolo that one sound. So... Oops, so that we get, of course, now we've got this utility cranking up our volume. So there we go. Much better, much better. It's a really, really beautiful sounding piano. Really nice sounding. Has a lot of depth, a lot of richness. There are some other macros here that are worth taking a look at. So, uh, you know, you got standard stuff like reverb. Attack is pretty, is, is actually pretty forceful. If you turn the attack all the way up, You get almost like a s totally synthetic sound. So you could do that if you wanted to um, just work with this in a different character. Same with the release. Bring the release down very quick. Again, this is a pretty strong, little heavy-handed control. I mean, these obviously take it out of the realm of sounding like a an authentic piano. Tone is really great. Tone is going to help you kind of uh, bridge the gap between... A darker sound. Let me uh, go back and reset this. Bring the tone all the way down. It's going to be better for maybe like something moody. You know, you see those YouTube videos, like inspirational YouTube videos and stuff that have uh, some kind of inspirational story. And there's this like really moody piano in the background. That's going to be great for that. Whereas uh, if let me see which one is that that's over here. 
So if I were to turn this up, there we go. Now I can change the, the tone. So this is much brighter. So you can hear that the brightness between this, which is kind of a little more, a little more muted, a little more moody, a little more melancholy, and then it's getting brighter. So that tone control really does a lot. To, to brighten this up. It's probably not gonna get quite to the level of like a, a pop piano, but it's definitely sounding pretty uh, different. And I really like being able to do that because sometimes I wanna record multiple piano parts and, and kind of create the texture of multiple actual pianos. And one of the characteristics of, of a specific piano is, is its brightness. And uh, you might wanna play softly with soft dynamics, but still get a bright tone. So that is a nice macro built into this. And then of course, just volume. The way these are built, I think it's helpful to have a little bit of insight into that. So if we were to look at, uh, you know, the original instrument looks like this, it's just a set of macros. And if we were to open up our device chain here, we see we have one device chain. And if we open that up, then we find inside there is another set of device chains for each of our samples, right? So these are the samples that are found up here in the pack under samples. We see long, long, and then we have the pedal, and then we have hammers, and we have the staccato, right? So these enormous samples here are the ones being loaded in here down at the bottom. And each one of these is basically a sampler. So um, if we were to just click on the device for the pedal noise, for example, or the hammer noise. What we'll find is that we're, we're this is actually using the, uh, the the native sampler, not simpler, but sampler, which is a, a, a really very rich device. I don't use it often myself because it's a little overwhelming. And I don't think a lot of people use it unless they are designing legitimate instruments. But obviously you can design legitimate instruments with it because Spitfire wouldn't waste their time if they couldn't. Um, so in here you can see, you know, like the different zones that are being set up for the hammer uh, sound. And you can see, I wouldn't recommend going in and, and modifying any of this stuff, but it's good to understand how it works. It's basically a hierarchy of device chains. And then um, it's also using the new um, hybrid reverb. So when you're back here at the beginning and you're adjusting these reverb levels, you are adjusting parameters within this hybrid reverb, which is a brand new device, I think, in Ableton 11. And uh, I'll just say as a side note that um, I have just upload, upgraded to 11.1. I had 11 for a little while, and 11.1 .1 is native, uh, has native support for the new Apple sil Silicon chips, which is what I'm running here. So if you have an Apple Silicon chip, I highly recommend getting on it because I have really noticed the difference between uh, running Ableton natively on the M1 and having to run it through the Rosetta, which is kind of like a some kind of bridge, techni technical bridge between uh, the Apple Silicon and you know what the, what the kind of platforms and processors that the software was originally written for. So definitely upgrade to 11.1. .1. So far it's been very stable and very happy with it, but it's way faster. And I think it has a big impact on these effects and things like that as well. So that's essentially how this works. And um, you know, it's a piano. So if you're a piano player and you make music with pianos, this is just going to be a really nice addition. I like it a lot better than any of the other pianos that I've used in Ableton. 
Um, it definitely holds its own against other piano libraries that I have in contact, for example. So I would definitely use this to layer in. Uh, and maybe if I was working on a production and I wasn't in Ableton, I would use Rewire to get audio out of here because it's a really, really nice sounding piano library for sure. So um, let's see, that's about it for, uh, for the upright piano. I want to look at the brass quartet next time because, again, it's building on the same idea of the Spitfire audio collection that comes with Ableton 11. And um, it's got, you know, the, the custom made uh, devices from uh, Spitfire that they've built in Max for Live. And uh, similar structure to the um, strings that I talked about the other day, where there's like an all in one and, uh, and, and, and then a, co a collection. So I'll be looking at that uh, probably on Monday. Today is Friday for anybody who's watching this down the line. And uh, I'm just going to take a look and see if there's anyone in the chat. Uh, I'm still waiting for that to load. I don't see anything right now. And uh, anyway, if you have questions, please reach out to me. Always feel free to leave a comment. Uh, please subscribe. It really helps me out. And if you do leave comments or questions, you message me. It helps me maybe to understand what topics are going to be useful and interesting and uh, any packs that you're using that uh, if I have them, I'll definitely cover them. All right. So thanks so much. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. All right. Bye.